You're listening to today's inspirational message on pursuing God with Gene Apple. Here's Gene. Well, this is a special Holy Week edition of Pursuing God as we walk through some of the significant moments in the life of Jesus that culminated in the events on Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, which we're celebrating on all our Eastside campuses this weekend. And I hope you'll just invite someone who really needs more of God, who needs hope in their life. One of my favorite spots to visit when I'm in Israel is the Garden of Gethsemane. And I know that's true for many others who've had the privilege to travel there. After sharing in the Last Supper with his disciples in the upper room, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley and came to the Garden of Gethsemane. The garden was actually a tree of olive groves. Gethsemane means a place of crushing because it was there that olives were crushed. These were anguishing moments for Jesus. He knows that in the coming hours, he is not only going to die, he knows how he's going to die. We all know we're going to die, but we don't know how. Jesus knew he was going to go through the agonizing torture of crucifixion. In fact, they had to invent a new word because nothing in their language could describe the intense pain of the cross. So they came up with the word excruciating, which means out of the cross. And worse yet, He knew he would be carrying all the moral wrongdoings and foul-ups and sins of the world of all time on his shoulders. And for the first time in eternity, God the Son was going to experience separation from God the Father. He was going to experience hell on our behalf. So what does he do in these most anguishing moments of life? He prays in this place of crushing where olives were crushed with a giant stone. He prays. Can I ask you, what's the heavy thing, the crushing thing that you're carrying right now? What what is the overwhelming thing in your life right now? Some of you are going through your own experiences that feel like they're just crushing you in your family, your marriage, your career, your health, your finances, your business your school, your love life. Maybe you're watching one of your kids or grandkids go through something and you can't fix it. You can't change it in your own power. But like Jesus, you can pray. I've seen, and maybe you have two pictures that artists have done of Jesus coming to this Garden of Gethsemane, kneeling for prayer. And in those pictures, he always looks so calm, cool, and collected. His his hair is combed and neat. It looks like his robe just got back from the dry cleaners and a photographer has fluffed out his robe like you would a wedding dress, you know. But those pictures aren't anywhere close to accurate. Jesus was overwhelmed and sorrowful to the point of death. He didn't just kneel at a rock. He fell on his face to the ground. His clothes are dirty from the soil. He's dripping in perspiration. His hair was probably matted and plastered to his wet forehead. Luke 22 verse 44 says, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Physiologists identify this as a condition called hematidrosis where severe anxiety causes the release of chemicals that break down the capillaries in the sweat glands, and as a result, sweat comes out of these glands tinged with blood. I've been to the Garden of Gethsemane 12 different times, and every time I'm overwhelmed by the thought that this is the place Jesus came to pray when he was crushed. And if he could bring the things that were most crushing to him there, so can we. And so for the next few moments, what what if we just transformed the spot wherever you are right now into your own garden of Gethsemane, your own place of crushing, your own place of prayer. And I want to invite you today to have your own Gethsemane experience. I, I want to invite you to take to God the heaviest things in your life right now that are crushing you, the worry, the fear, the burden, the anger, the resentment, the concern, the person, the issue, the anxiety. And if you wanna kneel right where you are right now, if you can do that, feel free to do that. If, If you want to get in a posture of humility before God, 
where you can kind of bow before him. Or, or maybe you just want to open your hands. Just put them on your lap right now. Let's get in a posture of prayer. And let's open ourselves to God right now. And now let's begin by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Would you just say it with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So right now, just continue to pray. Take your heaviest burden to God and ask for his power to be demonstrated in the situation that you find yourself in. This is your Garden of Gethsemane moment. Gethsemane is the place that you can bring the greatest things that are crushing in your life right now. I'm going to just pause while you pray. God, I thank you for the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus could come carrying what was most crushing and burdensome to him, knowing what awaited him in the hours ahead. And God, I pray for everyone who's listening to my voice right now who are carrying their own burdens today, things that are crushing them, and may they feel your presence and your power and your angels strengthening them and the power of your Holy Spirit in your life. May this garden of Gethsemane give them the strength to endure, to continue, and to persevere. And I ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Tomorrow, I hope you'll join me back. We're going to visit a very unusual site. We're going to celebrate what happened there, the courtyard of Caiaphas. I think you'll be surprised how moving it is. I'll see you tomorrow.